What is up YouTube, Skiz1 here, and today we're taking a look at and testing out the Mighty Marker PM23 and the Mighty Marker IM14 bleed through. These are two industrial grade markers with permanent oil and xylene based paint, and in the case of the IM14, bleed through ink. As always, I'm going to give you all the important info you need to know about these mighty markers, and then we'll be heading over to our testing area to test these industrial grade valve controlled broad chisel tip markers out in a surface tagging test. And don't worry, we will be testing the bleed through functionality of the Mighty Marker IM14 as well. And at the end, I'll let you know if these Mighty Markers are indeed worth the slightly more hefty price tag than you would pay for a lot of other similar industrial and graffiti markers. Of course, as always, down below in the description, I've left a link to the best deal I could find on the Mighty Markers if you want to try some out for yourself. If you do buy from my links below, it does help to support my channel as well. So the Mighty Markers here have high quality metal bodies as you can tell they're manufactured in the USA by Aeromark company US manufacturing usually produces a relatively good standard of industrial grade product and that is no different when it comes to these markers their paint markers being heavily pigmented have this nice mixing ball in them. The oil-based inks do not have a mixing ball since the inks don't separate as much. The PM23 here comes in 15 colors, including a gold and a silver, and the IM14 Mighty Marker comes in blue, red, and black. Colors indicated on the cap, of course, so blue and white is what we have here. Today we'll be testing the white out to really test the opacity of their paint formula. This size of the marker comes with 22 milliliters of paint or ink. It claims to mark on most surfaces, including oily and wet surfaces. We'll have to try a wet surface test out definitely in that case. The paints and inks dry in about 30 seconds and are water and weather proof. And Mighty Marker claims that they are fade UV abrasion and chemical resistant, which is bad news for the buffers, I have to say. And let me tell you, these paints smell very, very chemically heavy, so you can tell there definitely is some serious stuff in them to indicate their permanence. The chisel tip nib here draws lines about 7.2 millimeters and seem to be not too dense if you give them a little squeeze, which will hopefully promote smooth flow of paint and ink. Our surface tagging test will be a good test of the nib's flow as well as the quality of the actual valve system and the durability of the nib itself. Furthermore, the PM19s here come with a chisel tip there, which you can see, and a bullet nib. It's a dual tip nib. You can tell this nib isn't too dense just by looking at it as well. I'll give you a look on screen. In fact, below I'll put a link to where you can buy one of these since I think it's a good one to test out and see if you like the Mighty Marker paint formula and the actual marker quality itself. Again, this one has a metal body and a nice mixing ball in it. One of these bad boys will only put you out about seven US dollars, but the bleed through will cost about nine US dollars in these respective sizes. Both of these do come in mini slash short body sizes and with fine point nibs or large chisel tip nibs for varying prices, of course. The price is slightly higher than other brands like Grog, but less than say crank markers. A lot of the price can of course be attributed to the high quality formula and well, made marker body and valve system functionality. And to be honest, the color selection in these is quite good compared to most. So now we'll head over to our testing area to tag a few names of subscribers up and see how these write on a couple of different surfaces. We're going to also make sure they write nicely on a wet surface. In the case of the bleed through, we are going to cover it and see if it actually does bleed through. Let's head over there. Okay, welcome to the testing area, everyone. This is where the good stuff gets done and this is where we actually see if uh, these markers are really worth anything. So of course, I have a black surface here and a white surface here, both fairly smooth, a little bit rough in some spots. The black is gonna be a very nice test for this marker, this test will test the opacity of the marker. Of course, it'll also test the vibrancy of the formulas here as well. Being that it's a little bit rough in some spots, it'll really put the nibs durability up to the test and we'll see what happens there. And of course, the test will reveal how good the valve 
system of these industrial quality mighty markers are. But last but not least, let's not forget we want to test the bleed through capabilities of this mighty marker IM14. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off writing on the white here with it, and then we are going to cover it up with a white paint to see if it will bleed through. Now I feel I should mention here that the bleed through does only say that it will bleed through oil based paint coverings in particular, but given the heavy chemicals used in these, I sort of have a feeling it'll do a bit more than that, and that's why we're going to test that out with actually an acrylic based paint today. Something else I did want to mention quickly, there are several different kinds of Mighty Markers. Here is one of their ballpoint mighty markers. I did a comparison involving this marker a little while ago. If you haven't seen that and you want to check it out, see how one of these guys performs, go over, click the link in the uh, corner where the cards are. Okay, so let's start off and see how this writes on just the black surface. I did uh, test it a little bit myself and you do notice right away this nib, or I'd say that I guess the formula absorbs quite a bit of whatever color you're painting over. So that is certainly a factor. You want to keep this nice and juiced up like so, but Azo asked for a shout out. Let's give him a quick shout for sure. You can tell already, this isn't even streakiness. It's actually just the nib absorbing a little bit of the black paint underneath. And I do wanna make sure you guys understand, I have not painted this recently. The last time I put a layer of paint over, this was a good month ago, probably at this point. So you can see here how much of the black paint it absorbed. So you do wanna keep this incredibly juiced up here. Another name we wanna hit off, we definitely wanna hit off Swiss. Uh, a buddy of his asked for that. Rest in peace, Swiss. So as you're seeing, not the most vibrant here. Um, if I really, really juice the nib up here, um, you can tell it's not really the best. You can see here it's absorbing actually a bit of red that's under this. So I guess one thing you can take away from that is that this formula, whatever's in it, is really just cutting through all of the dried paint under this, reactivating it and actually interacting with it. So whatever you think of the vibrancy here, which at the moment I'm not really impressed with. You do have to give it credit for having some clearly quite mighty, you could almost say, ha ha ha, chemicals in here that are that are actually making a big difference. And that is, you know, one of the things that will show you that this would actually also be quite hard to remove. And also, I don't know if you can see, but the drip I had under here, it's actually reactivating all of the paint under it. So this stuff will actually clearly write a lot better on a surface that's not painted. So I do want to emphasize that you shouldn't really fault this marker for just being so harsh on the paints under this. Clearly, these are very, very industrial markers as they've always been marketed to be. So you don't really want to be using them layer over layer, I would say, with other paints or things like that. And as was mentioned inside, we are going to test this out on just a wet surface. We're going to see what a little bit of water does to this marker. Also going to give a shout out to Soke here. I guess you can technically say it writes on a wet surface. It doesn't seem to do too much worse than, say, the other dry surfaces. You can see, uh, once again, though, it does sort of lose a little bit of that opacity there. Let's, uh, yeah, and it gains it right back when I wrote on the dry part. I don't know. It doesn't function too, too poorly. I would say this writes on wet just about as well as any other sort of paint marker would write on a wet surface. So it's not really something, in my opinion, that they should be bragging about. It does an okay job. But right now, I do want to get to testing out the bleed through marker, and we will see how it does on a white surface to start off. And then we will see what we can cover it with. First things first, let's give our shout out to space.
And right away, I'm actually liking this ink much, much more than whatever paint formula they're using. Again, I think the paint formula is fine if we're not writing on, say, a painted surface already, but this is performing really, really nicely, actually. It's something that I can actually, you know, see myself using. Just so everyone's aware, this, this part of the surface is a little bit wet, hence the streaking. Streaking becomes a lot more prominent when you're using ink, just because the formula is a little bit thinner in terms of pigmentation. I really like the name Space, though. We're going to hit him off again here. Here's me writing with the nib compressed the whole time. You can see where it was compressed nicely. You get slightly fatter lines, a nice juicy tag here, and honestly, it looks really, really good. But you guys know what time it is. First, we're gonna cover it up with a white flame orange. So it is an acrylic based paint. So no disrespect to space, obviously, but we do have to see if this withstands some paint. Wow. Oh my gosh. It didn't even do anything. Okay, so that is two actual, like, legit layers of paint I just put down, and it looks like I didn't even do anything. That's actually incredible. I have to say, I haven't tried a whole plethora out of bleed-through inks or anything, but this is definitely the most impressive I've ever used at this point. And the thing is, with some bleed-through inks, initially they'll look like they're covered up, and when a paint dries, then they'll be more visible. Whereas this one, the paint hasn't even dried yet, and you can already see it through, which means when the paint dries, it's only gonna get better and more visible. Visible. So we're actually gonna try and cover it up with like a purple uh, now and see if that works. So to be honest here, I am incredibly impressed with this so far. This is a very, very rich high value purple and in the case of high value colors with paint high value means lots and lots of pigment usually if they're done well this is standing up extremely well to a high value color which is even more impressive to me the white is one thing but this is like a purple that has tons of pigment not that a white doesn't but the values in the two colors are different and that's what's most impressive about this. And it's not like I skimped out on the on the paint layers. I did some real good layers of paint here, and this wasn't even a very thick line tag. The water was interfering with it, and it bled right through. This is actually a very, very impressive, even mighty, again, you might say, marker. So it's honestly standing up to its name, which is quite nice for a change. But I do wanna see what a black can does to this, just to see, even if it bleeds through and is slightly visible, Well, that's that. Of course, it's not really gonna do too well with the black, but if you're gonna try and use any color besides black to cover this, maybe if you let three or four coats actually dry in between spraying them on, you might have better results covering this up, but this is an incredible marker to work with, it has to be said. So now comes the time where I wanna give you just sort of my overall thoughts on these markers in particular, so you can know if you're interested in buying them. I would like to emphasize, first and foremost, these really are industrial 
industrial markers. A lot of other industrial markers have been sort of adapted to be used more as art tools or tools for the graffiti writer, whereas these are just industrial tools. And that's much more so important to keep in mind with the paint markers more than the ink markers. These aren't the type of paint markers you can layer over each other or do anything remotely artistic with. These are really just sort of a one and done kind of put whatever you need to put on a surface, mark a palette with this or whatever, and move on. So again, if you're the type of graffiti writer looking to catch some tags, things like that, these would be a go-to. But if you're looking to do some canvas work or anything of that nature, this is not going to suit you very well. So don't let the great color selection of these Mighty Marker PM23s fool you. I would say in general, they're a very heavy chemical based paint formula that's really just looking to leave a mark on something. But most people are not buying bleed through markers for their ability to overlay each other. At least you shouldn't be if you know anything. This is very clearly a marker that can stand up to taking a beating when it comes to being buffed. Trust me, I can tell that just from the smell. It can stand up to being buffed. It can most certainly stand up to being covered very, very well. This is legitimately, this is the best bleed through formula I have actually used. And that is saying something considering I have used bleed through formulas by Crink, by Molotow, and even I think by Grog. And although you do pay a pretty penny for these, you're still paying less than say Crink prices. So again, a little bit up to the individual writer. Is this something that is going to work for your style of graffiti? Figure that out. And if the answer is yes, you'll be very, very pleased with this. Overall, I do have to say I'm far more impressed with the bleed through ink formula of the IM14 rather than the paint formula of the PM23. These are very clearly markers with very high quality paint and ink formulas that do exactly what they've been marketed to do. Furthermore, like I said earlier, Mighty Marker does have have other types of markers such as this ballpoint or steel tip marker. You can check out a comparison of that type of thing on screen now if you want to go check that out. I will see you over there. Until my next one, peace. Also, leave in the comments if you do want to see a review of this little guy, the Mighty Marker PM19.